Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about trading a knight and a bishop for a rook and a pawn. And if you do the math, it's six points for six points. It should be an even trade, but in reality, that's not the case. There's a couple of really important considerations that you need to keep in mind when you're deciding to make this trade one way or the other. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, guys, so first things first, in the Lee Chess database, this position has been reached quite a bit, and the move knight to g5 has been played 14,000 times. And after black castles, well, let's see, 2,200 players have played knight takes f7, and about 1,000 players have played bishop takes f7. So over 3,000 players, basically, were willing to go into this trade where they would get an, a rook and a pawn, but they would lose a knight and a bishop. And so, for example, you take just like this, this is the trade that I'm talking about. Now, what I want to do is show you something by turning on Stockfish. So here's the Stockfish evaluation of the position right now, minus 0.1. So it's slightly better for black, okay, just a little bit. But watch what happens as soon as we play the move knight takes f7. Do you see that? Minus 3.4. That's a big jump. Like, why is Stockfish saying that? So let's go ahead and follow out the line. It, minus 1.8, minus 2.8, minus 1.8. The best move it's saying is, let me turn it on so you can see, castling. Um, here we are, minus 3.3. So it's jumping between minus 1.8 and minus 3 something. The point is, it's good for black. Whatever number you want to use, it's good for black, right? And this is kind of the general rule. Normally, the, the knight and the bishop is better than a rook and a pawn. So you should not give up your knight and bishop for a rook and a pawn like in this example. That being said, there are some important considerations. And what I want to do now is show you a position and see if you can guess the Stockfish evaluation of that position. So let me jump over. All right, so here's the new position. Before I turn on Stockfish and show you what it says, I want you to pause and try to guess the evaluation of the position. What do you think it should be? And just keep in mind, all the pawns are equal except for this extra pawn that white has. So we have a rook and a pawn versus a knight and a bishop. What do you think the evaluation should be? And this is a little bit of a trick question, but go ahead and pause and think through, make your guess. All right, well, if you had a chance to do that, I'm going to go ahead and come over here and I'm going to turn on Stockfish. Here we go. Plus 1.9. I'm going to guess most of you probably were not going to guess that because you're like, dude, you just said that a knight and a bishop is better than a rook and a pawn. And now you're telling me the rook and pawn is better. What's going on? Let me ask you a follow-up question. What is the major differences, or what are the major differences between this position and the previous position that we just looked at? There's two or two or three that should really jump out at you. What do you think? This position and this position. Well, the answer is number one, this position is close to the end of the game. This one over here is still very early on, lots of pieces, lots of pawns, right? This one is not. And then also this position, the rook it has complete control over an open file with a place to infiltrate into the opponent's position. Okay, so we have control over the file and rook to d8 check is a viable move for us, which allows our rook to get all the way to the back rank. And we can pretty much go wherever we want from there. Not, you know, anywhere we want. We have to obviously not get captured. But the point is after rook to d8 check, the king moves, we have options with our rook. We can start going here, trying to come on the seventh rank, putting pressure on some of these pieces. Our rook is very involved. That, my friends, is the big difference between this position and this position. Okay, so what did we learn from this? Normally, the knight and the bishop are better, but if you are at the end of the game, and if the rook has a place to infiltrate towards the end of the game, things change and the rook and pawn actually become a little bit better okay so keep that information in mind and now i'm going to show you a few more positions and see if you can guess the stockfish evaluation of these positions all right so here we go this is another position for you again pause and try to figure out what do you think the stockfish evaluation of the position is keep in mind we have a knight and a bishop which is equal we have a rook which is equal and then we have the knight and bishop here with the rook and pawn here so what do you think the evaluation of this position should be All right, if you had a chance to look at that, let's go ahead and turn on Stockfish. Minus 1.4. So um, what's going on here? Well, first of all, it's not that close to the end of the game, right? Like I mentioned before, it's, there's still quite a few pieces on the board here. Uh, so that's one thing. And then also, even though white does have control, do they have a place to infiltrate into the enemy position? Well, no, you can't go there. 
No, you can't go there. No, you can't go there. You can play rook to d5, but that's not really infiltrating the position. And so you have a little bit. Okay, you do have the open file, but other than that, it's not the end of the game and you can't infiltrate. And so because of that, we see that the two pieces is better. Stockfish gives the evaluation better for black. All right, let me show you another one. All right, so here's the next one for you guys. Again, same idea. Go ahead and pause and think through what do you think the Stockfish evaluation of this position is? And then we'll talk about it. All right, if you had a chance to look at that, let's go ahead and turn on Stockfish minus 0.9. So what's going on in this position? Well, it's, it's, it is close to the end of the game. So that's something that should be in favor of the Rook. But do we have control of an open file with our Rook? No, we do not. Do we have a way to infiltrate into Black's position? No, we do not. This pawn is, is blocking us off nicely. And so because of that, it's slightly better for Black, but not as much as before. All right, so let me leave you with one final position here. And as you'll notice, this is almost the exact same position that I just showed you, except I added some pieces on. So go ahead again, pause and try to guess Stockfish's evaluation of this one. All right, if you had a chance to do that, let's go ahead and turn it on. There we go, minus 2.2. .2. So what did I change? Well, I added some more pieces. So we're not as close to the end of the game, which as you remember, should be a, you know a more of an advantage for the player with the two pieces and that's exactly what stockfish is evaluating here minus 0.2 again the rook is continued to you know be blocked out can't infiltrate none of the white's rooks have access to an open file as so you put all of that together and it's a very nice advantage for the player with the two pieces so hopefully what you learn from this video is that the general rule is that the two pieces are better than the rook and the pawn but you do have to think about how close is it to the end of the game and also, more importantly, does the player with the rook have access to infiltrate the enemy position like we saw over here? If that's the case, then it is going to be better for the rook. All right. So keep that in mind when you think about making the trade of a knight and a bishop for a rook and a pawn. So for those of you who do have the chess skills blueprint, number 15, where he talks about unbalanced trades. That's why I made this video two minor pieces versus a rook and a pawn. I hadn't done a video specifically on that. So I wanted to go ahead and knock that off. I will be covering some of these other ones in the future. I already have a video, I believe on three minor pieces versus a queen. I need to add that in here. I haven't uh, linked that one yet, but that one's already kind of covered, but I will be kind of talking about some of these other ones as well. If you're interested in getting the spreadsheet, link is in the description below, but as always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart and take care.